Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly Bitcoin video where I'm very happy to say that we can look at Bitcoin in a very positive light today as we've seen a bounce off a very, very key level. We spoke about it last week. We mentioned it was make or break for the bulls down at 55k. Yes, we did tap into 53.5k to be a bit more precise, but 55k for me was where all the confluence of major support was sat and we needed to see that level hold. And hold it did. So it's looking good. Obviously, we're still very much range bound. We're still within this consolidation, which we need to break out to the upside to confirm that this bottom is in. But this is all looking very promising. Obviously, we've got the fundamentals in place and we're going to really home in on the technicals, of course, as we always do. The fundamentals, obviously, the Ethereum ETF just around the corner and also the fact that this failed assassination attempt on Trump kind of has worked out favorably for his uh, his campaign and the fact that he's obviously endorsing crypto is positive for crypto and obviously for Bitcoin and is bullish for Bitcoin, understandably. So those are the fundamentals. That's the backdrop that we've got. So we've got the fundamental momentum. We obviously need that technical confluence. And as I mentioned, 55K was crucial. So let's dive into that. And then obviously towards... The end of this video we are going to talk about what we can expect for the end of this year okay what is going to happen from here what are our targets we need to recap what we were looking at so first things first two pitchforks of very important significance so we've got the major pitchfork here first second and third pivots it's an original pitchfork steep gradient we're going up quick and we have been kept between the upper and lower median lines so far. That's these blue lines here. Okay. So as I say, I would consider it looking very, very top heavy if we were to leave this lower median line. And I mentioned I'm happy for wicks down below. Certainly wouldn't want it to dip beneath the consolidation just beneath uh, this level. So that was my kind of buffer. It came down to around 50.5k where coming down beneath there that would be a place where i would certainly want to get rid of any long positions okay but we got that very good response in and around the confluence point so we had the lower median line of our major pitchfork so that's this up tre trending one here and then we were looking at the other intermediate level pitchfork which was just holding the price action to the downside first pivot here second and third it's a shift pitchfork shift pitchfork typically holding the corrective price action and again it's the lower median line that we came into right at the intersection with the major pitchfork low median line so we had a really wonderful confluence of pitchforks right there and that's why i was calling that level 55k as the target for the bottom and then there were two more bits of important confluence very very significant also so for, i also like to look at time with regards to these elliott wave scenarios now i have this scenario as a wxy so a double three, a W, X, and a Y, okay? And the time bet uh, correlation between the W and Y was exactly one to one, okay? And just to demonstrate that, so if we bring our Fib time tool on, bring it to the end of W, extend it from the beginning of uh, Y. So as you can see, just a, a couple of days out, so I was actually looking at the bottom to occur on this day here on Monday of this, uh, sorry, Monday last week. Yeah, obviously it did happen a couple of days prior to that. Okay, but as you can see, no daily candle closes beneath this intersection. And yeah, there we have it. Very nice one to one relationship. So very nice Elliott wave scenario, all looking very, very corrective indeed. Obviously, ideally, we need to get back above this upper median line to confirm the breakout, but it's looking solid. It's a very nice three-wave scenario, WXY completion, one-to-one -one relationship between wave W and wave Y. Um, we've got the, uh, the confluence of the pitchforks, and the last major bit of confluence to discuss is looking at our Camarilla pivots. So Camarilla pivots are incredibly useful for crypto, especially Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, also works very well on the Bitcoin slash, sorry, uh, yeah, Bitcoin slash Ethereum chart also. But yeah, if we just pull on the uh, pivots here on the daily time frame, I'm going to get rid of everything but the pivots just so we can appreciate them here. So you can see here we had a dip down to the S3, hit it very nicely, resistance up at the R3, came down, a little bit of a bounce at the S4, 
into the S3 and then this period here. So when we're on the daily time frame, each period represents a month. So this was up for our month of uh, July here. So I was looking another reason for 55K. I was calling 55K as the bottom. Another reason for it was the S4 being down at this level. You can see as soon as we hit this level, we rebounded into the S3 little bit of a pullback consolidation and now we're into the monthly open okay monthly open is here because it's the halfway point between the s3 and r3 okay so another use for the camera pivots as you can see um whichever time frame you're on here on the daily so it represents monthly periods so this is the monthly open the kind of middle region here it looks like we probably just pushed through that monthly open to be honest so it's another level ideally want to close um have a daily close above but it's looking good as i say huge amounts of confluence we've mentioned the fundamentals the technicals all lining up there as well it's just a really obvious level to click buy as far as i'm concerned and i believe that all of that all of those buy everyone clicking buy at the same time that is what is required to really shift the market no doubt volume will just be following here there's a reason i don't use volume it's because volume can be predicted and it can also be hidden okay so having volume on the chart isn't always useful catalysts uh, obviously are going to provide the volume you don't need volume being displayed to show you that there is volume you know you can you just know when there's a lot of confluence between indicators that there is going to be high volume as i say volume can be hidden and so it's not always useful to have it on the chart so i don't generally have it on because it's just distorting the chart as far as i'm concerned so there you have it so as i say i don't need to be told that there's a lot of volume here i, I can i just know by the, the the way the ta is playing out the fundamentals backing it also um so there we have it um so those are our four major confluence points we're going to take off the camera pivots now bring back our other annotations so that's that's it obviously we're at the median line another so another bit of temporary resistance the median line we've got the monthly open around this point so it is a bit of a level to contend with here around this kind of 63k mark so maybe it'll pause a little bit but i think this market has got the energy to really start ripping to the upside very very soon um so Bitcoin's looking pretty solid. Alt's not yet kind of taken over. Um, and I think, yeah, Bitcoin might still have that relative strength maybe for a few more weeks before altcoins take over. Um, but yeah, as I say, it looks like we are starting this very strong crypto run right here. But it's almost textbook. It really is. I really like the way this played out. Intersection of major pitchforks. Uh, we've got the time correlation between the W and the Y. So Elliott Wave playing a big role. Camerilla Pivots playing a big role. Fundamentals playing a big role here. It's really all being pieced together incredibly nicely. Uh, it came right into the invalidation level. So that offers the, the most premium setup you can think of because your risk is so well defined. It's so close to the price action, which means that you've got a tight risk or a tight stop and we'll talk about the potential targets where you can see the risk and you'll be able to then appreciate the risk reward relationship and just see what kind of a setup this is um but obviously yeah time will tell still we need to break out of this upper median line to confirm that, that we're breaking out of this and we're not actually going to continue this downward trend yeah so it's not yet verified itself as a uh, an end to this uh correction but uh it's looking very positive i have to say um, so with that said, let's just talk about our target. So we've discussed it previously. We're going to go into a recap on it here. It's better seen on the weekly time frame. It's important to have this chart, which is the Bitcoin index chart. And basically, it's all based on an Elliott wave scenario that stems back to the genesis where we've got basically the first major wave one is this bit of price action here. Kind of looks a bit distorted. You can appreciate it more when you go on the linear scale and see that this is actually broken down into five waves very nicely. Also, with that being a one, two, three, four, five. Of course, you've got to remember on the log scale, all the price action as you go higher gets squ squashed together. Yeah, so very, very distorted. But there you have it. The wave one, the two, the three. And then the fourth is a converging triangle. Let's just um, zoom in a little bit just to see that wave four. So it's an A, B, C, and then a very, uh, that's the D, and then it's a small E. And then we go into the wave five, which gets a little bit more complicated, but corresponds with what I'm looking out for on the Dow Jones, which is playing out at the exact same scenario. I've got that playing out also an ending diagonal where wave five is 
an ending diagonal made up of a, a first wave, a second, a third, a fourth, and a fifth. Yeah, to follow probably going into 2026, that kind of time frame to finish the, the major five wave move. Um, and then I'm not going to call what happens from there. There's lots of things that could happen geopolitically, but um, yeah, not going to call anything just yet. But um, yeah, obviously that would suggest we have a, a fairly strong correction after that point, which obviously if crypto does become mainstream could be softened. Um, but yeah, we will focus on the current bit of price action. So it's we're still making out this wave three here. Now, don't forget ending diagonals. The sub wave count is a three, 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 three. So we've got our first, second, third wave for the first wave. Again, you've got it's a, a little bit ugly looking how you would label that. But again, looking very corrective. Basically, it looks like a, a double three to the downside. Um, now here, I would say the initial wave count. So again, we're looking for a double three to the upside. So I believe our first three waves are in first, second, third. Now, don't forget, price will get squashed as we go to the upside. But that is the bigger move, believe it or not, because we've got that's a move into the target, which is 170K currently sitting at 50K. So the bulk of the price move is this bit here. So although it looks squashed relative to this, it's the bigger move, as I say, and I think we're going to have a three-legged move up to here. I think it'll be fast-paced, no doubt. It's not going to take as long as this, but um, yeah, I expect it to make its way up in a, in a three-wave move up into the target being 170K. So let's talk a little bit about, about why that is the target. Again, it's four bits of confluence. So we've got the November US election. That's the next major catalyst that I see that we could see a little bit of a kind of um, euphoria going into. Uh, and then you might just get a bit of a cool off. Okay, exactly how it plays out is hard to say. Whether we hit that um, euphoria point before the US election, just after, it doesn't have to be on the day. Okay, but that's a reasonable ballpark target for now, November this year. Okay, so one reason for uh, the target of 170K because this vertical line of uh, November 2024 is the intersection with this line connecting the highs here. Uh, comes in at 170k then you've got the pitchfork upper warning line which is what we're targeting we're targeting here we're expecting an explosive move so it's reasonable to target the upper warning line where that comes in again offering confluence around that 170k mark and then the fourth piece of confluence is using our fib tool uh, taking that from our heart previous major high to low so we generate a fib projection and it's the 1.618 fib projection Again, very nice FIB level uh, to offer a further confluence. So it's the fourth major bit of confluence there to consider for why 170K is the target for this year. And as I say, I expect this to be a pretty dramatic move. We've got fundamentals. We've got the US election. To, uh, we've got the Ethereum ETF. Obviously, not too long ago, we've had the Bitcoin um, spot ETF. We've had the uh, the Bitcoin halving. All of this we are going to see the impact of for a couple of years. Yeah, just because we've had already a little bit of upward price move following the kind of halving, etc. It doesn't mean it's all been priced in. I believe it's all going to have a, a, an impact for at least a couple of years. So, um, so yeah, I'm expecting a strong and aggressive move to the upside. So just a little bit of a roundup here. Very much a recap because we had forecasted this in the last video. So really just recapping, but I would like to say that it does look a very, it looks like a very good, strong bounce that we've seen here that we needed to see. Um, so hopefully that has been detailed enough. I'm looking forward to doing the next video with for you guys. And um, yeah, let's see how this plays out. All right, guys, I'll wrap it up there. Thank you for your attention and watching through to the end of this video. Now I know there's a lot of you watching that would like to learn how to confidently trade the financial markets independently and I also know how confusing this can be regardless of how many stressful hours that you put in. For that reason I've put together all of my trading knowledge in a complete course titled The Works. The Works consists of thorough and jargon free lessons broken down into a comprehensive curriculum providing you with a holistic understanding of the markets and giving you an accelerated journey to being able to analyze and trade the markets all by yourself. And for those of you that are looking for my weekly detailed video analysis on crypto and stocks, then there's Cryptology, which is a subscription that will also give you access to the works while subscribed. 
For more information on what's included in the works or cryptology, you can head on over to wave618.com or alternatively use the links in the description to this video for a limited time 50% discount offer. So I hope to see you on the other side, but in the meantime, if you would like to sample some of my educational videos, then you can check out these videos that you can see on your screen right now. Thanks once again, and until next time, take care.